And there we have it. We are live for our Inside AWAI for the month of August. And this is the number one easiest way to choose a copywriting niche. This is a big subject that I know a lot of new copywriters struggle with, whether they should pick a niche, what niche should they pick, is the niche that they like viable. We're going to dive into all of that and a whole lot more. And of course, we got to bring in the niche specialist herself, Pam Foster, AWAI. How are you doing, Pam? Great. How are you doing? Welcome, everybody. I'm doing excellent. Good, good. Well, this is going to be a very high energy presentation. Um, I have a lot to cover and um, some really cool things I've never shown anyone before about where to find niches with clients. So I'm not going to waste any more time. Um, Jake, chime in whenever you need to, but I'm going to just dive on in. Absolutely. I can't wait to get started. And I'm sure uh, all the people that are joining us today are just as excited as you are. Yay. All right. So um, the thing is, I have been talking about niches for a long time, and we're not saying you absolutely have to choose a niche or you can't get going as a writer at all, but there are so many benefits. I, I just want to go over some of those with you. Um, first of all, who am I? I'm the learning chief at AWAI. I've been a member of AWAI since 2005. If you're not familiar with us, please go to awai.com and you'll learn all about what we do. We train people how to make a living as freelance writers, basically. <laughs> That's what we do. Um, I'm a big niche advocate and I'll explain why. I'm the owner of a website called contentclear.com. I used to have a pet niche industry copywriter called petcopywriter.com. I recently sold it to a veterinarian who took it over because I can't clone myself and I do this now. Um, but I also have a few freelance clients in the veterinary space because uh, I still want to stay uh, active as a freelancer so I can talk to you about what's going on now. Um, I'm also the author of four AWAI programs, including how to choose your writing niche. So, and if you're from Canada, niche. <laughs> um, all right, our goals for today together. Finally, I'm going to bust through that overwhelm and, the, and franticness of which niche we're going to help you choose it right now, okay? I'm going to show you the number one way to make it easy and painless. I'm going to show you powerful clues to find niches with clients because you may be asking, well, I'm interested in the market, but... Do they have clients who need copy? Oh, yes. Um, and then I'll show you five ways to bring your niche to life. Once you make that decision, it's really easy. And it makes all your marketing of yourself 10 times more focused and easy to do. So that's why I want to show you that. And then we'll open the floor for questions. But as always, um, you can ask questions in the Q&A or on Facebook while I'm teaching. And um, we have a whole... Cracker Jack team of people from our staff who are going to help answer those questions for you. So who is struggling with choosing a niche market? I know a lot of people are. So we're just going to bust past that right now. Relief at last. All right. Now, what do I mean by a niche? Some people think I mean I want to be a web writer or a blog writer. That's not what I mean. In my world or in our world, that's a specialty. You know, what, what do you specialize in? I specialize in blog writing or content, whatever. What we mean by a niche in our world is a business market, industry, or field. So here's an example from a job posting on LinkedIn or somewhere. I can't remember now. Might be indeed.com. Just to give you an example, this is for nakedwines.com. Now, they want someone who understands wine, Right. You're responsible for creating compelling sales copy for all wine products and biographical copy winemakers. Um, you'll aggregate facts, stats, wine notes, and wine expertise, and you'll uphold the brand voice fervently while doing so. I love that. But I like at the bottom, um, it requires a writer to work quickly with extreme flexibility and exceptional detail, attention to detail to make each wine and winemaker stand out. Nice to have solid wine chops are a plus, but don't be a wine bore. <laughs> that cracks me up. But, you know, if you are someone who is a wine enthusiast and you have some knowledge of wine, or it doesn't have to be that you ever worked in the wine industry, you could just be someone who has been studying wine, enjoying wine, collecting wine, 
going on wine retreats, going to wine tastings, you would be a fabulous match for this client if they found you the wine copywriter. Making that up, but that's an example. So the big thing is today, clients really prefer writers with some knowledge of their industry. They, they just have such a relief if they find a match like that. And I'll, I'll get a little more into detail in a moment on that fact, but I, I don't want to gloss over the struggle to decide. I know that if you're listening to this now, you're not sure what niche or market you belong in as a new writer and or you have too many options like I've been in gardening and I I worked as a nurse and I love to go camping with my husband and I, I have so many niches that would be exciting it's we call that shiny object syndrome too many options too many fun ideas out there I'm guilty of that too so or they might be trying to combine industries like can I write for yoga practices and um uh machinery parts Yeah, you can, (laughs) but there isn't a lot of synergy there. So it might be really tricky to focus if you're doing that kind of thing. So I want to help you banish these struggles right now, right this minute, right while we're talking here. What we're going to do is first, I'll tell you my little story because it really made a difference in my entire life and the trajectory of my career. So when I started out as a freelancer back in 2006, 100 years ago, I was like, okay, I'm a web content expert. But then I thought, well, this is my first business card from 2006. I called my business Foster Communications. And I would say, because that's what I do. I foster communications. But that was so vague and and nobody understood exactly what that meant. (laughs) So then I I became a web content expert and put out contentclear.com, which was all about web writing. But then I thought, well, who am I actually marketing to? Like, who would be my customers? They can't be every business on the planet. It, it just, it's too overwhelming to even think about how to reach every business on the planet because businesses are typically searching online for a copywriter in whatever industry they're in. So then I started looking at the financial world through AWAI because there's a lot of opportunity in financial publishing. Copywriters do really well in that world, but it's very competitive. And I realized I don't love it. So what do I do now? Well, I struggled for a while. I had peaks and valleys and I would get a client in this market and then a client in that market. I'd have a learning curve each time to understand their world. It was really herky jerky. So um, I finally had a V8 moment where I went, oh my gosh, In the last 10 years, I've been working in the veterinary industry as a staff writer and um, web person. Uh, So why don't I go for that market? I mean, I don't want to struggle anymore. No more struggle. So then, ta-da, I just established PetCopywriter.com. And suddenly, I knew what to say on my website. Now there's a skilled pet copywriter on your team. Attract more customers to your pet or veterinary business with help from an experienced strategic web content writer. Up on the right over here, web SEO content and consulting for pet industry marketers. Now, do you think anyone found my website when they were from a veterinary company and they typed in copywriter veterinary industry? Heck yes. I was number one in Google. Clients found me every week. Some of them had no money for me, but a lot of them did. And also on my LinkedIn profile, they would find me. You write for the pet industry? We need you. That's the kind of magic I want you to experience, like starting today. So that's why I'm here being a super, super advocate for choosing a niche market. It's not something you have to decide for the rest of your life. As a matter of fact, I switched out of financial to do this. And um, you can easily apply what any kind of traction you've gotten through choosing your first niche and then apply it to another niche when you get more interested in something else. And that happens to a lot of writers. They evolve over time. Someone might start out in health, move over to financial, or move over to travel. It's okay. I just want you to start somewhere smart right now. So, So Pam, I just want to jump in real quick. I know a lot of new copywriters, when they're uh, talking about niches, they are a little worried that being too specific will limit their potential prospects. What would you say to somebody who has that concern? Okay, I'm going to show you a, a, an eye-opening world of trade associations and trade conferences 
that have hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of clients just in that market. So in the veterinary industry, for example, there's an annual global trade show for veterinary professionals to go and get continuing ed. They also have an exhibitor floor with 800 different companies. So do you think that would limit me as a copywriter? Think about how many clients you can have on a given day or, you know, in a year, five or six, right? If you're doing blogging for them and other writing and email and website copy, I mean, you really can't handle more than half a dozen clients at the most. So when you go to a trade show and you see 800 potential clients of all different kinds, tech clients, you know, uniforms or, you know, uh, oh gosh, it goes on and on. No, there's no limitation when you pick a niche. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Suddenly you attract people who are excited to meet you because you match what they're needing. So uh, that's what I would say. All right, so now we're going to turn it from my story to your story and how you can set up the same kind of pipeline and magic that I just showed you for my experience. This is what you're going to fill in today. I write what kind of copy or content. You might write web copy, B2B copy, um, lead generation content. You fill that in on the special services you want to offer as a writer. And then for companies in the blank industry, pick any industry based on my background in blah, blah, blah. So you might say something like, I write web copy for companies in the landscaping slash gardening industry based on my background as a home landscaping gardening enthusiast for 50, you know 30 years or whatever it is. My main point is it doesn't have to be that you had a job or a career in an industry to be a great writer for a certain niche market. All righty. So we're going to go through this now, but that's your, that's your framework for this. And again, we're going to have these slides available and the recording available on Inside AWAI after this. So don't worry if you're not getting everything written down quickly. Okay. So here's an example. I write lead generating B2B copy, business to business copy for mid-sized companies in the medical device industry. That's the focus of a writer who either worked in the medical device industry, maybe they even have been a patient who's gone through a series of um, issues, medical issues, where they started understanding different devices and they, they get it. They, they understand what that experience is like. So they want to work in that world. There's a lot of money in that world, by the way. So that's just one example. So you're going to fill this in for you, right? You can do this. Now, I'm going to show you how right now. I want you to take a deep breath with me. Focus on the number one easiest way to make your choice right now. Ready? Drum roll. Bring, ding. Start with what you know the most and enjoy well enough. Now, what I mean by that is I've had people come to me and go, I've been a nurse for 30 years. I never want to write about the medical world. I'm burnt out. Okay, so you don't enjoy that. That's not going to work for you. But what else do you do in your life that you would enjoy? I actually had this conversation with a member and I said, well, what do you do in your spare time? What do you do for fun? Oh, we're avid campers and we have an RV. We're part of a camper club. We travel all over the country every year to different resorts. Uh, I write the newsletter for the camping club. I said, you know, that's a market, right? And she went, what? Yeah, think about it. Camping resorts, camping gear, campers, um, clubs. Oh my gosh, it goes on and on. And she was such a happy camper. <laughs> I didn't even know I was going to say that. But um, she, <laughs> she found her niche and it was something that was a hobby. So what happens when you, when you have that epiphany, it makes your life so much easier because you have knowledge of the world, of, the, of that industry. You have contacts maybe in that industry, even if it's your local landscaping store, landscaping nursery, you know what I mean? If, you're, if you wanna work in the gardening niche, I'm just pulling things out of the sky right now, but you have contacts. That nursery might be your first client because you could say, you know, I've been coming here for five years, buying all the plants and everything, I love you. Can I help you with your website? Because I noticed it doesn't, you know, it could really 
be improved to bring in more customers for you? They're probably going to at least pick up their ear and go, oh, that might be great. Let's talk. Now, you know the prospects because you are one. You are the audience. You are a customer, a buyer of that world. If it's something like industrial manufacturing and you've worked in that world for 30 years like Steve Maurer has, who better than to write copy for comp you know, companies in that world than him, right? It'll dramatically shorten your learning curve. You don't have to suddenly figure out, as I have had to in the, t in the past, hey, you want to write about commercial dumpsters? Sure. I don't know anything about commercial dumpsters. So now I have a learning curve. Happy to write it because they're paying me. But if somebody comes and wants me to write about something in the veterinary industry, there, there's very little learning curve. I'm on it. I know it. So that's a huge advantage. And then you can start pr promoting yourself right now, like today. I'm not kidding. You can suddenly go, oh, I'm the copywriter for websites in the blank industry. Boom. Go for it. You can do that today. Now, clients will instantly value you. I, I already mentioned that when they're looking online, they really prefer to find a writer who has some knowledge in their industry or market. So it's an instant match. Bing! Out of all the writers that are out there, thousands of them now, they're going to pick you instantly because you're a match. I often use the analogy of a giant football field of writers and um, a guy from a chiropractic, chiropractic office walks out into the middle of the football field and says, is anyone here a writer who has any experience with chiropractic medicine, either as a patient or you have some other knowledge of it? Everyone in the football field sits down except maybe you, if you are someone interested in writing for the chiropractic medicine world. Do you think that's a match? Yes. Do you stand out? Yes. So you, you're perfect for this. And clients will treasure that because they, they're so excited to meet someone who already understands market nuances, the lingo, the buyers, the trends in the industry. I get told that every day because I still work in the veterinary world. And they're like, we are so happy we found you because you understand pet microchipping. Yes, I do. A lot of other people don't. So it really makes that instant bond with a potential client that you can't have if you're a generalist. This is why I get really passionate about this, you guys. It can be amazing for you. You can jump right into projects or the client's mission. They'll see you as an ally and it's instant relief for them as well as you. Like we know what your market is and we know we understand that you get our market and we love that. And you'll be like, I can write for you guys because I know this, right? Beautiful. This works in any industry. So think about this. You might be going, what about this niche? What about that market? What about that industry? Hello, every business has a website or should and uses other marketing efforts to get attention, to get customers. They need copywriting or content marketing services to get that attention, right? What does their website say? What do their emails say? What do their ads say out there? Are they lame? They could use your help. Um, every industry has trade associations with oodles and oodles of clients. I'm going to show you exactly how that works in a minute. They also include business to consumer companies selling directly to consumers and business to business companies where they are the vendors and suppliers in the industry who supply, like retailers have suppliers who supply their software and their displays and all that stuff. And every industry has money for this. Trust me, when you see the trade show list I'm going to show you, all those worlds have money to market themselves. But really, the biggest benefit of all of this for you is it's your secret advantage. You will no longer have the obstacle of standing apart from other copywriters. You will leap over that instantly when you're a match for clients in a certain market who find you. You'll get discovered more often. I can't tell you just by blogging on my petcopywriter.com website about things pet business should know about video, mobile responsiveness, just copy stuff, headlines. They find you. They find the blog post and they're like, yay, we found the writer we're looking for. Gosh, where have you been? Right? Because they just find all these other writers who are like, well, no, I don't know anything about your industry, but I can learn. No, they don't want to teach. They don't want to spend time teaching a new writer. They want, they would love to have a writer come in who gets it already. So 
keep this in mind. You can change your mind later, your niche. Nothing is wasted. But if you start now, you'll have more opportunity and more income with less hassle and fewer struggles. Who wants that? Who wants more opportunity and more income with less hassle and fewer struggles? Me, 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 me. I want that. Okay. So here's what we're going to do right now. You're going to focus by doing a personal inventory on your bad self. You're going to look at what do I bring to the table that would be a match for a client in a certain industry. Now, there's a few ways to do this. First, you want to look at your career background, any past jobs you've had, skills and knowledge in a certain market. If you've gotten trainings and certifications, let's use the software world, for example, You've had jobs in software and IT. You understand that world. You have certifications as software developer or software um, uh, uh, call desk type of person. I'm trying to think IT support. Those are the kinds of things that would make you perfect for software companies trying to market themselves. And that's kind of a massive market, right? That's just one example. Think of any kind of job, career background. There, all these things may apply. If you've been in the medical field, you may have all of these things related to that work you've done. And you, you're excited to help companies in that world. This is, this is where you decide, yeah, it would be so easy to just go ahead and jump into that market that I already have a job background in. Or if you hate it, we have some other ideas. So here's the other ideas. Hobbies and interests. I know of several members who actually ditched the whole career background and said, you know what, I am a music freak. I love music, or I'm a weather chaser, or I'm a photographer, or I'm a golfer. Anything that you have as a hobby and interest, you know there's a market for, because you're a customer. I, I mean, hang on just one second. Sweet water. Okay. <laughs> I thought I had it right here. Ah, I don't have it right here. But there is a, oh, yes, that I do. Okay, I bought a guitar recently and some gear, and now I get this Sweetwater catalog with everything else I should buy, like buy, 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 buy products, gear, things, events, classes, ding, dong, ding. I never knew there was such a huge world in music stuff. So that all needs marketing, right? Um, craft beer, baseball, boating, barbecue, historic as events or historic preservation, whatever it is that you're totally into, there's a market for that. And you may have gone down a road where you develop skills and knowledge. Like let's say you make your own craft beer at home. You have the knowledge of that plus the gear and the experience. All of that matters to a client. So again, you know, this is, this is so much fun. Just think about your own background and what you can bring to the table. Here's another and one. Pam, I think, I think a very important part here, and we talk about it with Rebecca all the time. Uh, it came up in the Q&A. Somebody said that they were passionate about a certain niche or industry, but they didn't really have the technical knowledge or the industry knowledge. Uh, and it's very important to remember that as a customer, you're bringing that to the table. You know what the consumers want. You know what somebody in that industry would be looking for. So it's not necessarily about knowing how the RV is made necessarily, but why the RV would be beneficial to the reader, right? Excellent. And I imagine using that analogy, the RV industry, that you might also follow some groups in Facebook and you have an eye on what people are talking about or doing. Um, you know, so you know more than you think. Trust me, if you're involved in a hobby or an interest, you know a lot and the client will value that. Um, the uh, third category is what's your lifestyle right now? Are you a mom with young children or an older person empty nest like me? Uh, are you someone interested in vegan lifestyle or eco-conscious? Do you have experience with a medical, financial, or other issue that you could, um, based on your experience, easily relate to other customers in that world for companies, on behalf of companies, through your writing? Um, have you recently downsized or do you live kind of minimalist life? Are you retired or close to it? Are you an expat living outside of the U.S.? Um, and, you know, there's a huge market in people who want to live from anywhere and live maybe a more affordable life from anywhere. 
Um, those are just a few examples, but um, your lifestyle could be your niche, right? Uh, I mean, when you think about the new moms with infants or young toddlers, think about how much money is spent on products and uh, education and events and all kinds of things just for that world alone. All right. Now, I don't know. I don't expect you to sit down and map this out right this second, but now you know what to do. You know how to assess your background, do a personal inventory, and hopefully you'll come up with one to three ideas. What's the most obvious one? I've spent 20 years in the banking industry or the whatever industry, the automotive industry. You could make whatever you've done in your career, put that in there. I'm an avid such and such fan. It's a huge part of my life. Are you a sports fan, a fitness freak, uh, hiking, climbing, travel, golf? Uh, I don't know. I, music, again, there's so many things that people are interested in. There's a market for that. Crafting. Oh, my gosh. Just go to Michael's and look at all the aisles and aisles and aisles of stuff you could buy at Michael's craft store. Huge market. And then finally, I strongly believe in some area or industry and enjoy the lifestyle. So I strongly believe in living uh, with sustainable products or an eco-friendly lifestyle, or I strongly believe in animals with like I do, and I enjoy that lifestyle or that world. Hopefully I've even sparked some aha moments right this minute, making you do this <laughs> because this is the step in clearing out all the clutter clearing out all the overwhelm and just go, why not start with the obvious? I have so many examples I could tell you about. Um, uh, Elia uh, Christeus is one of them. He was kind of fighting, making a niche choice, but he'd been working as a car repair person in a car restore for years. And he finally went, duh, why am I not working in the automotive industry? And now his career has taken off, like just like mad. He's gone beyond copywriting to also helping with marketing planning and stuff like that in that industry, because he's a natural. It's a perfect fit, and his clients love him for that. All right, so now you might be thinking, well, okay, so I've identified a couple of markets that would be relevant to my life. How do I know they have clients? I'm going to show you some clues, and by the way, every industry has clients, okay? Unless you're working for the buggy whip industry, <laughs> There will be clients in any niche you can think of. Okay, the way to find out, well, there are basically for me two main ways to look into this. First of all, trade associations. I'm using landscaping and gardening as an example here. I found the National Association of Landscape Professionals. They have a big old website. They have a journal or a blog. They have a membership directory. They have all kinds of resources on their website, including a bookstore. Who's going to write that? Um, sponsors and advertisers. Uh, trends. They report on trends and market happenings and buyer insights. Um, and they usually have a big annual conference. Most trade associations have some sort of annual trade show or conference. Conference that has a trade show. So you can see here, um, that this is just one trade association in the landscaping world. And actually, it's not the only trade association in the landscaping world. So that's pretty cool. The other thing is those industry conferences. So I have always worked for a long time in the veterinary industry. Well, every year, there's this big, huge global conference in Florida where everybody comes in or goes online to get their continuing ed credits that are required in the industry. But there's also this massive trade show. This one happens to have about 800 exhibitors. And what is gorgeous about it is they post their exhibitor list on the website. Now look at this. This, this is like the beginning of these are just the premier sponsors and then they do the rest of the exhibitors A through Z all 800 of them with links to their websites. I call this the jackpot. <laughs> now, any industry conference typically will have an exhibitor list and you can see it, you can sift through it. You can find companies that would pay to be in this trade show. Now, let me just give you a hint on the money spent. 
on someone to be at a trade show, small business, medium, large. In this conference here, it costs basically $100,000 just to show up, have a booth, and be in their program guide and ads. And then you add on top of that, what are we going to do for email to reach out to people who are going to go to the conference so they'll come to our booth? What kind of handouts are we going to give them? Are we going to sponsor talks? All of that stuff they need copy for. And they don't just need it for the trade show. They need it for their business, their company, ongoing, right? So gold mine, jackpot, whatever you want to call it, every industry has a conference like this, at least one, maybe many. I just uh, found a few months ago the Wikipedia page on U.S. trade groups, and it lists all these different trade associations that you never even would have thought of, like the Corn Refiners Association, the um, Fashion Originators Guild of America, American Gas Association, America, uh, Wind Energy Association. I mean, every area, look at all these associations just in agriculture or just in energy. And this isn't even every single one. This is like a partial list. They call it the most notable, but there are many, many others. So that's a great place to go. Just Google Wikipedia US trade groups and you'll find this amazing resource. And then I went to look at what's going on with conventions these days. I just looked up Las Vegas conventions and they put a whole list here of all their conventions coming up in 2022. So we have Waterworks Association, MongoDB, which is some sort of software related thing, National Automobile Dealers Association, Agile Loft, which is all about artificial intelligence, Academy of Criminal Justice Science, amusement and music operators, and then call and contact centers. I actually, we have a member who writes for the call and contact center industry, the call center industry. So if you want to find a bunch of trade shows and look at them by industry, I have a link here, orbis.com. I'm going to show you that page in a second because I only found this this morning and I just went, <gasps> There it is, Nirvana, the Discovery Channel, whatever. <laughs> That's where you can find amazing trade shows in an industry you care about. So I'm going to stop sharing my slides and just show you a little bit of this for a minute. Can you see the list of trade shows, Jake? Yes, yes, you are good to go. All right, groovy. This is that Orbis thing I was just talking about that I only discovered this morning and my jaw dropped out of my face. Um, you can search for trade shows in any industry. And I did a drop down. This is just the start. It goes on and 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 on. La 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 la. And then sub industries. If you want to work in healthcare, maybe you want to work in pharmaceutical only or veterinary like me or vision. Anyway, I'm just, this to me is like, I just struck gold here. Wow. Because as you've seen, every trade show has exhibitors with money. Those are your clients. You will learn to love them. <laughs> okay, now let me just show you an example. So I went to the uh, HVAC, heating, cooling, air conditioning um, world, and I found this trade show. Now I went under about who exhibits. Let's go over there and see what's going on. Welcome to this groovy thing. You can either search exhibitors or you can get a list. So I just clicked on that to get going. And then I found um, exhibitor lists. Download the exhibitor list PDF. Okay, I think I'll do that. <laughs> Watch what happens. I hope you can see this. Magic happening here. Oh my goodness, look at all these HVAC industry companies. Da, 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 da. Can you work for a few of these clients if you're an HVAC, if you have any experience in that world? Sure, like all of them, but not at once because you'll probably have a heart attack. But that's how that works, right? Now let's just look at another example. I had another one here. Oh, that's that same page. Okay, oops. Hang on one second while I move this down. <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. Hang on one second. Sorry, I wanted to go to one more just to show you. 
Okay. This is the I don't, this is a trade association that promotes and strengthens the currency operated machine industry. So like um, games where you put the money in and you can play games in a, in a, uh, a game place. <laughs> that doesn't come out very well. But you know, like if you go to the store and there's a red box where you put the money in and you get um, videos you want. That is the kind of thing they're talking about here, but they're having a big old trade show called the International Amusement Expo. Go over there. All right, I'm going to go to their website just on the expo. And then, hmm, let's see. Oh, 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 it's bouncing around here. Sorry. Exhibitors, check it out. Exhibitor list. My heroes, they have an exhibitor list. Ready? It takes a minute because they've got big, giant graphics loading all over the place. But look at this. Da, 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 da. Who would have thought it? The amusement coin-operated kiosk world, right? <laughs> I mean, it's Whenever a Whenever you show these off, I think it's such an amazing example to answer all the is my niche viable questions. Because who would have thought that a niche like this would have this many opportunities? So Pretty much at this point, any niche can be viable as long as it has some kind of X. Okay. Now, once you, oh, oh, one more thing. If you decide on an industry because of your background or interest or hobbies or lifestyle, there's also a whole local business world that you could tap into either as a start or just own it, own the local business market for this world. So I just picked out of the hat beauty and fashion. So think about local stores in your area or local service providers or companies that can you can help, right? So clothing stores, hair salons, shoe stores, beauty school. Is there a beauty school in your area through the community college or something? Um, are there related suppliers or manufacturers? I mean, every town pretty much has an industrial area of town where there are people making stuff. And there might be somebody in your town making uh, e equipment or materials or parts for that industry that you're interested in. This is just one example, but I know in my town, there is a carpet, there's a lot of carpet manufacturers. They make, you know, beautiful hand woven area carpets for homes and businesses. That's just one market. There's a, a granite countertop world here. I mean, anything you can think of. If you love home decor, if you love uh, whitewater rafting. I'm um, just pick anything. There's a market. So huh, now I want you to not write this second if you need time to think about it with your with your homework there. But this uh, this should be no more blockage or worry. <laughs> no more stalling. No more fretting. Just pick something that you fit that you could write about. Now you can pick one industry like gardening and landscaping. Or you might pick a couple that have synergy if it makes sense to you. Like you've worked in IT and you also have worked in the medical world. That is a market. There's tons and tons and tons of medical software companies. So then you'll just simply say, I specialize in content marketing or web writing or whatever you specialize in for mid-sized companies in the blank industry. I just picked craft beer here. If you love craft beer, boom, you're a match, right? Just do that. That's it. Nothing complicated. That's it. And then once you've done that, you can start promoting yourself. And very quickly, I'm going to go through five really strong ways to promote yourself now that you have a niche focus so you can start attracting clients like I did. The minute I launched my pet.copywriter.com website and started blogging, I started getting inquiries. So it can happen that quickly. All right. So write a bodacious bio. When you write, talk about you on your website or anywhere, you want to talk about why you're a great choice for the client, not about your history. I grew up in a small farm in Maine. No, nobody cares about that unless it's relevant to the client. So because I grew up in a small farm in Maine, I can write for your dairy business. I'm just making that up. But see what I mean? It's got to be about your value to that market client. So at Julia here, 
used to work in technology companies, and now she's a technical copywriter specializing in content marketing for B2B tech and SaaS companies, service as a software. Is that it? I don't know, because I'm not technical. Software <laughs> as a service. <laughs> oh, so software as a service. Okay. But she, this is her about page. Many of my clients find me because they're looking for someone with the right combination of tech experience and copywriting skills. Boom. That's what clients are looking for. They need someone who can understand the complex nature of their B2B tech products and services. As a technical copywriter who specializes in B2B technology and SAAS, I help my clients generate leads, reduce monthly churn, and engage more deeply with people. That is beautiful because it's so focused and it's all what's in it for the client. Okay? So, Julia, well done. It's just really good proof and it's, it, it's relevancy to the client. Steve Maurer worked for 30 years in the, uh, in, in the manufacturing industrial world. He says, I help you speak persuasively to your ideal industrial customer because I've been one. And over here, this is his about page. I'm an industrial copywriter and I write sales, copy and marketing for B2B industrial manufacturing companies. Why that field and industry? Well, I have 30 years of experience in the industry. In fact, some of my qualifications are bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, all relevant, relevant, relevant. The industrial manufacturing company who needs help with their website or whatever will be like, yes, yes, this is the person. That's what you want for a reaction when clients find you. All right, create your unique brand. So if I started when I thought about being petcopywriter.com, this was my, my own sort of marching statement or elevator statement. I write web copy for mid-sized companies in the pet industry. Well, that's kind of boring. So I then turned that into my brand messaging on my website, petcopywriter.com, race the head of the pack. That's what I want to help you do. Now there's a you client. Now there's a skilled pet copywriter on your team. And then over on the right, web SEO content and consulting for pet industry marketers. It's so easy to write this because it's so focused. And it's all about what's in it for the client. Again, easy. Here's some more examples. I love these. How about motorcycle rider for hire? Motorcycle riding that appeals to women as well as men. This is a female motorcycle industry copywriter. Woohoo! We have great green content, content and copywriting for green businesses. Is there any question as to what this person does or for who? No, it's a perfect match for green businesses. And then we have the real estate writer. That alone tells me who this person is. Your vision, my words, your success, the industry standard for real estate copywriting that converts. Ta-da! You've just explained in like, I don't know, less than 20 words, fewer than 20 words, who you serve and what you offer. Easy, easy, peasy. You can do this. Okay, optimize your website. So Jen Williamson is a copywriting expert with, who offers, I love this, fun, fearless copy and content for software companies. So if a software company finds her, is there any question as to who she serves and what she offers? No. <laughs> so you wanna make it really, really obvious what you offer for which industry and why they should choose you, which is what she's done beautifully here. Now, present a niche-focused LinkedIn profile. This is my friend, Dr. Eric, who is a optometrist, but he's an AWI, AI, sorry, AWAI member who writes for the eye industry world. So glassware, um, eye care companies, all of that. And he's got the cred, right? He's, he's an optometrist, first of all. And I don't mean, I'm not, that's not to say you have to be that credentialed, but he is. And then um, he helps eye care companies increase sales and leads by creating focused quality content based on my 27 years of experience as an optometrist. Boom. Does anybody wonder what he does? Do you go, I don't know what this guy does. I'm not sure. No, <laughs> it's so obvious. And that's what you want to do. You want to be super, super obvious, succinct, clear, and a beautiful match for all those companies. I mean, how many optical eyewear, glassware, optician companies out there? I mean, like a gazillion, right? Eric's a busy guy. <laughs> so uh, 
And then five, reach out to your contact. So if you're a crazy landscape or gardener person, you will have connections in that world, your local store, friends, you, maybe you belong to a garden club. Anyone related to that are instant, either possible clients or referral sources for you. So email them a message, tell them, you know what? I just launched my business as garden and landscaping copywriter extraordinaire.com. I'm writing web copy to help gar garden and landscape related companies bring in more business. Ta-da! Well, there, you know, somebody in that list that you email will be like, oh my gosh, I never knew that. I need you today. Or they might go, ah, my, my cousin owns a landscape business out in Poughkeepsie. Can you help him? And you'll be like, I can, because I know that world, right? So you'll be a superstar. And then you just, you know, ask them to refer you, get the ball rolling and connect with them on LinkedIn. It's that simple, you guys. Once you know your path, your focus, your direction, it just all pours out now. It, 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 it's that simple. Wow. Okay. So go on LinkedIn and find people you know. I mean, it can be even beyond your niche of interest. It can be people you used to work with or went to college with or whatever. And, and just start telling them what you're doing. And they also should probably see when you update your LinkedIn profile and you change your title, like um, Eric's is, I write copy for the eyewear company, your connections might see that in their feed. I don't know if that always happens today because there's so much going on in the feed, but um, at least start connecting and telling them what you're doing, especially in the niche, but it doesn't even have to be in that market, just people you know, because they may know someone in that market. Like, let's say you emailed me. Well, I'm not a gardening or landscaping company, but I sure as heck use a landscaper down the road and I can tell him that that's what you're doing now, right? That's how it all works. If you're focused and you can articulate in a sentence what you offer and who you offer it to, your life will be so much easier, I promise. Ah, so we have some resources for you. Um, on our website, if you go to our article archive, and just type the word niche in there. You'll find all of our content that we have on choosing a niche. We have a lot. We have some great articles from uh, AWI members who have written different perspectives on how this has worked for them. Um, and we also have, of course, more sessions like this one on how to get your foot in the door with clients, how to have a bodacious website. And little hint, one of those clues in that one is about choosing a niche and presenting your niche uh, prominence there on your website. So those are two resources. Then we have um, two programs that you might be interested in. One is the one I put together, how to choose your writing niche. It takes this presentation and it goes way deeper for you to walk through the whole process, look into different industries and um, potential client sources, and then actually market yourself in a bunch of different ways. So it goes through that if you're interested. We also have a program called Build Your Website in Four Days. And that has a bonus done by me on optimizing yourself for a certain market. So those might be of interest to you. You can click on those links when we have the replay. And then we have in our catalog a collection of niche-specific programs, health market, for example, nonprofits, financial, self-improvement. Those are just some of them. So you might want to check those out as well. And I think I'm going to end a wee bit early because I wanted to save time for questions and I didn't think I'd be done this quickly. But as you can tell, I'm really enthusiastic about this topic and I want to help you get past any kind of angst or struggle on this. Get past that. Just start somewhere, somewhere that you know, and make it happen. So with that, I'm going and to just start... Yeah, And just like you said, Pam, the uh, replay along with the slides will be posted. So those were live links. Uh, you will just have to click on the slides in order to get to those, but it should be fairly easy. Uh, we do have some questions for you here. So I'll just start right at the top if you're ready. Uh, yeah. Roxanne says, my niche recently slapped me in the face, said it's self-improvement. Her question is, is it too broad? Should she niche down a bit? Um, I'm not sure what slap me in the face means, but uh, you might. What area of self-improvement? Maybe you want to work on women 
women in self-improvement or entrepreneurs in self-improvement or young people trying to figure out their path in life? I don't know, because I don't work in that world. <laughs> but I mean, I guess that it's worth a try to target a certain area of self-improvement. Okay, very good. Uh, Michelle says, what if the niche you think you're interested in feels like there are already so many writers and bloggers in that space? I know that you you have strong feelings on that. Well, I guess I, the proof is in what you find in Google. So yeah, in the financial world, there are tons of financial writers, but there are also, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of financial related companies. And they may not, there might only be a small circle of publishers, financial publishing companies like Agora and Money Map Press, but then there are banks and there's financial software and there are summits, you know, financial summits. There are real estate investing clubs. It goes on and on. So I wouldn't worry about that. And really, any writer can only handle half a dozen clients. So when you think of the hundreds of thousands of companies out there of all kinds, there's a fit for you. So I wouldn't worry about that at all, at all, because of the volume of companies as you just saw. Oh, no, there's another veterinary copywriter. I'm in trouble. Not there are 800 companies alone at that one conference. I can only write for four of them, you know, right? Because I don't have. Yeah. So don't worry about that. That's something you should just banish from your mind now. Perfect. And, and in my experience, experts have told me that it's more the opposite. Instead of people trying to do this cutthroat sales business, they help other copywriters. They know they can only take on so much. So important to keep that in mind. Uh, yeah. Fran is asking about um, conflicts of interests in the niche. So she says, I still work in the private security industry and have done so for 21 years. I'm concerned this would cause a conflict of interest. What do you think? Well, that is something to think about. So for example, if I'm working for in the veterinary industry, an equipment manufacturer who makes a certain kind of equipment, like let's just say exam room equipment, tables and tubs and stuff like that, I will give them 150% and make them dominate the world. I can't have another veterinary equipment company say to me, can you help us with our website? Because I can't go, oh, I'm going to help you dominate the world. No, that won't work. Now, if you have a day job and you're worried about a conflict with a company, I, I don't think it would be a conflict if they're not direct competitors to your day job company. If it's some kind of ancillary business or an event or something that's not directly related, I think you're going to be okay. Because like I could still do freelance work in the pet industry, even though I worked for a pet startup for a little while. Because the other clients had nothing to do with what that pet startup was involved with, if that makes sense. Right. Hopefully. Yeah. That uh, makes sense to me. Uh, Norma has a question about reaching out to clients with uh, anxiety or if you're an introvert. Um, she says that how can I make a niche out of that and how can I communicate with clients with those uh, anxiety problems? Even emailing them or talking on the phone feels impossible. I feel like giving up. What would your advice be to Norma? Well, I mean, first of all, if you position yourself with your website and your LinkedIn profile, you won't have to reach out to a lot of clients. They're going to come to you. And, um, you know, I mean, if this just is paralyzing to you, one suggestion is that maybe you have um, a virtual assistant or someone who can field calls for you and then get the, get the projects and then you do the projects. I, I mean, if it's that paralyzing to you, I don't want you to think you can't do this as a career. Um, uh, there, are, there are always ways around that. You know, you could team up with another writer, for example. If you're in a niche like, um, let's just pick gardening again, because it's easy for me to talk about. Team up with another gardening landscape copywriter and say, look, I have a real problem con conversing with clients. It's just paralyzing to me. What if we team up and when you get overload or if you market and get more clients, I can write that stuff, but you're the front man. That's another option. All right. Very good. Uh, Suzanne asks, have you ever gotten a client from a trade association and how did you approach them? Ah, yes, I have. So what I do is actually you can't go to a trade show floor and just solicit your business and hand out cards. They call that suitcasing and they'll yank you out of there so fast because all those companies with booths paid a lot of money to get customers, get business. So they don't want anyone selling to them. So what I do is because I was blogging in the veterinary industry, I had 
um, a couple of clients who um, I would go as part of their staff or I would go as an industry blogger. I wrote for a journal, for example. So I could go in and just walk up to the trade show booths and say, tell me about your business. And they'll be like, oh, we were a startup. We're doing this cool new thing. And they're like, what do you do? Oh, I'm a blogger in the industry. Oh, you are? Can you write about us? And I said, well, possibly. Let me have your card. And then I follow up later. And once we start talking and I say, I can certainly talk about you on my blog, but you know, what else do you guys might need for help? That's how it works. You can't solicit yourself at the trade show, but take a card, follow up, natural conversation, bada boom, bada bing. All right. Awesome. Uh, Gayla says, does work for clients ever cover multiple niches? And if so, can you use the same content for both? I would need an example, I think. I'm not really sure what you mean. Okay. Um, does work for clients ever involve multiple companies? I don't think multiple I've run niches. across. Multiple niches. niches. Oh, multiple niches. Um, I can't think of a client that I've worked with who've, who's done that. I mean, if you're working for an agency, and that's another area, uh, like a marketing agency in the pharmaceutical world, or no, but that, that would be a specific niche. I mean, if you're providing content for a local ad agency, you will be writing for different niches um, because they have a variety of clients usually. But um, that probably doesn't have a whole lot to do with the niche you've chosen to focus on for marketing yourself. Okay. Hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that's helpful, Gayla. (laughs) Debbie has a question. Is it common for a niche to be both B2C and B2B? There are some, there are several. As a matter of fact, I use the examples of um, Staples, for example, the the office supply store. They sell office supplies, obviously, to businesses, and that's B2B, but they also sell back-to-school stuff for kids. That's business to consumer. Um, Another thing is fish tanks, for example. Have you ever gone in a restaurant where they have a big old beautiful fish tank in the lobby while you're waiting and you can watch the fish? Well, that's a business to business um, situation. But if you buy a fish tank for your home, that's a consumer situation. Another one might be gym equipment. You buy your own in-home Peloton or whatever you buy for your home use, or you go to the gym down the road and use their equipment. That would be the B2B side. Your own equipment is the B2C. So there are a lot of industries that mesh like that. All right. This one's a niche specific question. I have a passion for old Hollywood films, but I don't see how that would translate to an income producing venture. What do you think? Without doing all the research I just showed you, I have no idea off the top of my head. There might be clubs. Uh, I don't know. Turner Classic Movies might need your help. I, I, it's really <laughs> hard for me to know. They put out a magazine every month. Um, there might be, like in Hollywood, uh, restoration companies. Um, there's, I know there's a new um, museum in L.A. on film like the Academy Award Museum, I believe, or something like that. I'm just guessing I, I would have to do the legwork like I showed you to see what might be out there. All right, very good. Um, we have Linda. I have a full-time job and don't want my boss to know I'm pursuing a copywriting career via my LinkedIn page. Should you create another name or create another new LinkedIn page? This is tricky. Now, I know from our training with Elise Benin that you cannot have more than one LinkedIn profile. I mean, you can, but if LinkedIn finds out, they will remove the duplicate. So you have the option to do a company page uh, or you can just remove your contacts and make a new one. I'm interested what you think about that, Pam. Well, you know, I'm not a LinkedIn expert, but we spent a whole hour on this subject in in a separate inside AWAI session. My advice is to go watch that because Elise Bennon and Steve Maurer are the LinkedIn experts in our circle and they do address that. Um, So I would would hate to say something that's wrong. So I'd rather have you go watch that. And then it gives you lots and lots of tips on, on how to use LinkedIn beyond that one question you have. So please do watch that. All right, great. And Linda, I did send you the link to our Inside AWAI page if you wanted to go there. Another LinkedIn question. Uh, If like the optometrist writer, Eric, you already have a career and want to write about that industry, how do you separate your identity uh, from your writer identity on LinkedIn? Do you have to only focus on one? So this is kind of the same as the last question. Well, I mean, he's positioned himself as an optometrist and a copywriter and a stand-up comedian, by the way. So (laughs) if you look at his profile, you'll see that it, 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 it's not real strict. 
I mean, you can say, I'm a dog lover. I write about the veterinary industry and um, uh, whatever else. I work for AWAI. I mean, mine is kind of kludgy in that way because I have my day job here. And then I also work for the veterinary industry. So I've got both and nobody's going to arrest me, I think. And uh, <laughs> I think you can just look at other profiles that have kind of a mix and, and see what they do. But again, that LinkedIn session is much better than I am <laughs> at answering any question about LinkedIn. All right. Here's a question. What do you do if you can't attend a trade show because you're in another country? A lot of them are virtual now. And even their exhibitors have virtual pages. The thing is, <clears throat> I just showed you that a lot of trade shows will list the exhibitors online. So you don't even really have to go to a in-person or travel or do any of that. It's right there. Gold mine, ta-da. You can look them up. You can look at their websites. You can reach out to them all online. So I wouldn't think that's a barrier at all. And a lot of people asking about building a website. What's your opinion on that? Should you have a website before you begin marketing yourself? What do you think? Excuse me, I was choking to death. Um, <laughs> so uh, to get started, to just get started, putting your website together might hold you up. And I don't want that to happen. Start with LinkedIn because clients are looking every day on LinkedIn to find writers in their market. I know it because of LinkedIn jobs but also they just search. They just go into the search in LinkedIn, copywriter, pet industry. And if your profile is set up that way, they'll find you. So just start there and then worry about the website later. But ultimately you will want to have a website, especially if you're saying you're a web copywriter or anything like that. Um, so you kind of have, you have to own your own uh, domain and your proof and all that stuff. And a website is the best way to have that because LinkedIn could change its algorithm and stuff. And you can't control that. You can control your own website. So I highly recommend you have one when you can. Don't let it hold you up. All right. So uh, Mark asks, is it viable to focus on two or three different niches and create two to three different websites for each industry? Okay. Here's how I feel about that. You can. It's not as easy as just getting traction in one direction. I, I kind of think about it as, as having a foot on the dock and a foot in the boat and the boat's starting to slide away from the dock. Uh-oh, do I go to this one or that one? It's hard to think of positioning yourself on two different websites with full gusto and energy and blogging every week and doing the, what you need to do to get traction. I would recommend get some traction in the first one, add one when you can, and just, you know make it happen. It'll go faster if you just really get going on one. My All opinion. right. The questions, uh, we're getting through them here. Wes asks, yeah. how do nonprofits and community copywriting help help programs pay for copywriting? So I'm not sure if they're asking how you get paid in the nonprofit world or, or what the question is, Wes. What do you think, Pam? Um, well, they have marketing budgets. I mean, the, I used to work for the American Cancer Society as a staff member, and I know they have marketing budgets. Um, they need to, uh, you know, they get a lot of income every year from donations and a portion of that that's very transparent to donators, is that the right word? Contributors. <laughs> um, that a portion of their proceeds do go to operations. And part of that operations budget is paying for copywriters to write amazing fundraising stuff that will keep bringing in the money. So um, that's what I know about the nonprofit world. Sure, they, they can afford writers and they do. All right, Amy asks, will WordPress be enough without putting money into a website? Yeah, a lot of people use WordPress. Very simple, pick a theme and go for it. Yeah, I, I mean, I know people who do. It depends on your skill set. I am very bad at technical stuff and I don't want to spend hours trying to figure it out. It's much cheaper for me to actually hire a WordPress person and I give them the copy and the pictures and they just make it happen and like, oh, I can go focus on making money versus trying to figure out widgets. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. What do you tell a prospective client who asks for a portfolio or writing samples when you're just getting started? We have the most wonderful Inside AWI session that was just done last month, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, on that very topic, it goes through a whole hour of a, a whole bunch of ways you can do, you can create samples. Your website alone and how you present yourself on LinkedIn is a sample, really. Uh, but there are many ways, and I, I want you to check that out because I'd be selling you short if I tried to answer it right now in a minute. So inside AWAI, I think it's called, or just Google on our website, portfolio of samples or sample that'll show up. All right. Roberta asks, uh, I put together a website and then decided this was not the area I wanted to be in. And she doesn't want to waste her time with that again. Uh, should she have a blog first to see about the following and the interest it gets before moving forward with a website? Well, I mean, can you adjust your website? I mean, there isn't anyone who would say, hey, she changed the copy on the website. What's wrong with that? I mean, I think um, if you already have a website, I would tweak the copy and change the copy there. Um, I mean, you can do LinkedIn and stuff right away to change to your new niche. Um, blogging actually is a slow burn. It takes longer to get traction with just a blog. So I wouldn't recommend just a blog. I would recommend change your LinkedIn right, right now. You can do that in 20 minutes. Get on there, change it, boom, done. And then if you can modify your current website, which already is out there, I would go ahead and do that. All right, very good. Uh, Thomas says, I specialize in wealth building, but I take a, a um, contrary position. I have written two eBooks, uh, IRA 401k books, and I don't want to promote that because I believe because I believe and can evidence they are not the best retirement tools. Who do I approach? <laughs> ah, you stumped me on that one. I, I would, you'd have to research um, the market and see if there are companies that are offering alternatives and, and uh, educating people on, on contrarian approaches or ideas. I, I don't know. I mean, there are financial publishers who, um, like to talk about investing in companies that are not the norm and not what everybody else is following. So you might want to check that out, the financial publishing world, like Agora, Money Map Press. I'm trying to think of who else. I don't know right off the top of my head. Um, Stansbury Research. Yeah, I, I you definitely have to do some research on that. But you'll find those companies. They're out there if you are. They are. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Sounds like writing blogs is pretty important. Do you have any advice for writing blogs when you're getting started? Yes. Guess what? We have an entire hour long inside <laughs> AWAI session on blogging for clients and for yourself. Um, that one is an amazing session. You can learn all about how to get your own blog started and why you want to, and then how you can use it to attract clients and then how you can blog for clients. So I would check that out. Because that's a whole hour conversation, honestly. All right. Um, I think most of the other questions we have for now have been covered. Okay. Um, I'll ask this one just to reiterate about the conflict of interest. Sandy says, I'm a nurse. I'd like to write for medical supplies. I use medical supplies every day. Is that a conflict of interest if I write for other brands? Oh, my gosh. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, other brands. No, because I don't think that... Uh, I can't imagine like a brand that you use in your job as a nurse in the hospital is going to go, wait a minute, she's writing for some other competitor. They won't know. They won't know who your clients are. So I don't think that that is as much of a conflict if as the other one where um, I forgot what it was, security, the security person who asked earlier. Yeah, I don't think they'll know who you're writing for. So I wouldn't worry about that. Okay. Uh, well, I don't know if you want to do a last call, but that's that's uh, all of the questions that we have that we have not covered. Uh, remember, if you still have a question and uh, you didn't remember it being covered, the replay will be posted on the Inside AWAI page. We linked it in the chat. We've linked it in the Q&A. Uh, and if you ever need it, you can contact our member services team at help at AWAI. They'd be more than help, happy to help you out. Um, let's see. You can also ask questions on Facebook anytime in the group you're sure. in right now. And we've got um, a wonderful staff of people who can answer your questions. They'll ping me if it's something they can't answer. And uh, so ask away. This is not over. But I hope, I hope, I hope I see a sea of hands coming up that this has helped you clear the clutter, clear the anxiety, and just go. Just pick it and go. That one slide that says, what's the most obvious? 
you know, just choose it and start, start there. And then you can change later. I hope this helped. Thank you, Jake, so much. And everybody else who was here to help. And thank you, Pam. Uh, and just to answer, the, there's a lot of questions about where should I start with X niche. That trade association uh, presentation that Pam put together is a great way to learn how to begin the research to find out what companies to go for, how many companies there are, is it viable? So definitely go back once the recording is posted, watch that section. And if you have any follow-up questions, just like Pam said, we're all available on Facebook. That's a great way to uh, get some response. So yes, uh, that's going anything, to do it for us. Yeah, I was just going to say anything about how to approach clients, what they're looking for, how to get your foot in the door. We have covered just in a session like this in Inside AWAI. So scan through there. And if you have a question like, what do clients actually want from me? There's a session on that. How do I get my foot in the door? There's a session on that. So we try to do this every month to help you succeed. So um, that is definitely your go-to. They're all free and they cover all the questions you might have. So good luck. Thanks for being here. Good luck, everybody. Uh, we see hope to see month. you again soon. Bye. Bye.